Good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to do this little impromptu video uh, based on some comments and questions I have received about um, <clears throat> my rooster who passed away. Oh, well, he's my rooster didn't pass away. Um, I had I've had hens pass away recently. Um, and Bash, I don't know what's going on with him. He He's up one minute, and the next minute he's run out of steam, and his tires are out of air, and he's on the ground. And he can't, he's just so tired. Well, this morning, uh, you know, he, he was on his deathbed. Then this morning, he comes running out, and he's high-stepping, and he's breeding the hens, and he's talking to them, and he's eating the scrambled eggs I brought out and whatnot. And his poop is still green and white. However, it's not water anymore. It's a little sludgy, so it's actually solidifying. So, I don't know what that means, but that we've been here before and he's been back down again. So, um, I'm not really, I'm not saying he's getting better. <laughs> uh, not till he's completely better that I can tell as far as his poop and, and he's not tiring out. But, um, one thing I did want to mention is, some one thing I was asked is, have you had a higher than normal mortality rate? In your flock lately. Uh, the mortality rate in my flock is abnormal, but only in the sense that they are all living way past their expiration dates. A couple of months ago I lost my black Americana gypsy. She wasn't ill. She was 11, going on 11 and a half years old. She, it was her time. Nothing wrong with gypsy. Uh, I fought to save Moretta, my uh, Americana Easter egg or cross, uh, who had the strange tumor-like things on her side. We tried for months. They would not heal. They refused to heal. And she went downhill and we lost her. Last night, just last night, I buried another of my Ulsters. One of my blue, what I call my blue bookend hens, Neela and Alice. Uh, Neela, I heard uh, in the baby monitor on the ba in the barn, I heard a great commotion, a strange commotion, and we went running out there, and uh, Neela, who went to roost as normal, and had bossing everybody around yesterday, she's very arthritic, and she had, both nares were full of cysts. They get bigger and bigger, and they were blocking her nares. I don't even know how she's getting oxygen, frankly, but she wasn't doing open mouth breathing unless it got to be hot. Um, she was on the floor dying. She had basically, I guess, flipped off of the roost. We have a portable nest box. We made a big old wooden one, and it has a coat crate on top that the head hen, June, who's 11 and a half, sleeps in, and Neela usually sleeps up there next to her. And she was there last night when we locked up, and just a little while later, the commotion started. I think Neela, uh, basically, her heart was stopping, and she flipped off the roost, and everybody was freaking out. So we held her while she passed away and uh, buried her, showed her sister Alice. Alice is going to grieve. They're nine years old. They've never been separated. Turned nine in Ma uh, March, I think. Um, so, uh, that was the third hen in, in a couple of months. But, they were 11, over 11, eight years old, and nine years old. I could literally lose eight hens in one day and it would not be abnormal because there are eight more hens that are in the 9 to 12 plus year old range. Eight more of those and a whole group of eight year olds behind them. So they are already past their expiration date. So no, that is not a normal mortality rate at all. That, the only thing abnormal is how long they are living. That is how what is abnormal. Um, now, as far as what's going on with Bash, we've ex everybody keeps saying, well, what about this, and what about this, and what about this? What? I can guarantee you there's not one thing I haven't thought of yet and have explored and crossed off the list or am not sure of, and I have a veterinarian friend who I consult with on things that I am confused about, and, um, you know, all of his symptoms were right down the line for lead poisoning. However, where he would get lead is a, is, is a mystery because there are no old buildings here. There is no old paint. 
um, bullet casings of brass. Unless he found an actual pile of buckshot and ate it, I don't know where he would get lead. But the symptoms are also similar to heart failure. He's pale. He wasn't purple, but he was pale. He will be burst of energy one minute and collapse the next. A friend of mine, joking, she says, maybe he's got AFib, because my husband's just like that. He's going, 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 and they're going to have to put a pacemaker in, because his AFib is so bad. I said, well, you know, it's possible. It's very possible. He could have a, an irregularly beating heart. He's three years old, but he could have a heart defect that has not shown up until now. In the, and we had a very hot stretch of weather that was unusual for here. And he is getting, he's not young. I mean, it, three years old doesn't sound old, but for a rooster, it's not that young. Especially a big rooster of his size. Big, it's like big dogs and little dogs. Big dogs don't generally live as long as little dogs. Pretty much the same with chickens, it's, with some exceptions. But um, it could be anything. And uh, the textbook is not always want to tell you what you need to know. You don't go, he's got A, B, C, D, E, and F symptoms. Oh yes, it's this. It doesn't always work that way. For example, I am pretty much gotten to be an expert on reproductive malfunctions. But there was one that had me flummoxed. Um, I thought I was going to find one thing when she died, and I found something totally different. Um, big breeder quality, which this rarely happens in a breeder quality bird. Breeder quality Buff Orpington. Huge! Huge in. Biggest Buff Orpington I think I've ever had. Um, she started laying about 34 weeks old. She laid a few weeks and quit. She never laid again. She started bloating up and she would, you know, it would dissipate a little bit and she would bloat up. She never laid another egg. She died about three and a half years old never having laid another egg. Her belly had gotten so huge she could barely walk, so I did drain her one time just to make it so she could walk. I don't advocate draining hens anymore um, because it does not solve the problem. I only did it for her comfort because she was still going and eating. Well, she died on her own, and when I opened her up, I found, in place of one lobe of her liver, two giant baseball-sized tumors. I consulted a veterinarian, I know, he's a, a well-known veterinarian in Kentucky. I sent him pictures and he said, guess what that is? He said, that's where her egg yolks were going. He said, they have to go somewhere, they're born with all the yolks that they're going to lay, they have to go somewhere, hers were being deposited in her liver. I have never seen that in a textbook, have you? I've never seen it in anything about keeping chickens, have you? But that's what happened. All opened them up, and that's what it looked like. All the yolks were going into her liver. So um, there's one that's not in the textbook. For all the things that are in the textbook, there's probably 150 that aren't. I'm just telling you, if you have a hen who's squat walking, I had one, you know, she can't stand up all the way. She can't, she's just kind of squat walking, like you kind of duck walk on your own heels, you know, yourself. She was doing that. Invariably, somebody will say, oh, it's Merrick's. Well, guess what? She's five years old. It's not Merrick's. Merrick's is the disease of younger birds, and I don't have Merrick's in my flock here. Um, nobody died of Merrick's. There was no typical Merrick symptoms anywhere. So, of course, I knew that was full of garbage. There was not, nothing like that. Um, come to find out, she had a lot of fluid built up in her body. She was a hatchery girl, one of my original flock. And a lot of fluid, and she had reproductive cancer all along her oviduct, little tumors all along her oviduct. She had reproductive cancer, and there were fluid and things pressing on nerves where she couldn't stand up. Um, not Merrick's disease, just a side effect of the uh, reproductive cancer that she had. Um, so there's that. Now, as far as, you know, Bash and his heart, roosters drop dead of heart attacks all the time. Why couldn't they just have heart problems that, that slowly show themselves? Of course they can. Almost anything's possible. Uh, I once had a Delaware pullet who was 24 weeks old. She was coming in delay. Uh, one, af one afternoon, I found her in the nest box, and she was just panting. Her heart, you could hear her heart was just racing, just racing. And I said, oh my goodness, what's wrong with her? I took her to the house, and my husband held her on his chest, and she sat there for a while, and he goes, and we could find nothing wrong with her. Nothing we could find. She, her heart was just racing, and she was just out of breath. 
24 weeks old now, hasn't started laying yet. She was one of the older ones to lay. And uh, we went to the grocery store the next day, came back home, and found her laying inside the pop door with blood coming out of her mouth. When I opened her up, one whole chamber of her heart had just imploded. There was blood all in her chest. She had a heart defect. Guess what? It didn't show up until she started to lay and put her body under that stress of producing eggs. So her eggs lined up ready to go, egg yolks lined up, and she was about to lay, and her body could, her heart couldn't take the stress because of the defect. And it imploded. So, um, you never know how a heart problem is going to present itself. She had no issues before that. She was full size. There was nothing wrong with her to, to see. You could not examine her and find anything wrong. So, it, I've about decided that whatever's wrong with my rooster, it's probably something peculiar to him alone. It's not an external factor. External factors can't happen, yes, but they're, we've explored everything, and I can think of no way he could have anything wrong that he ingested or he was exposed to here. Uh, I know somebody said something about chemtrails. Um, I don't want to get started on that, situ that subject because I don't truly hold, hold to that for humans either. I don't, you know, it's like accepted fact now that people are, that pilots are spraying the United States with chemicals and uh, I'm mean, thinking, who's going to do that to their own people, their own families? That, that makes no sense. So um, I don't even hold to that for people. But no, I don't think so because I've had chickens for 13 years. This is the first time anything's presented the way Bash is presenting. And, um, you know, these so-called chemtrails have been going on forever. So, you know, I've never seen this before. Um, so, uh, there's that. Now, somebody suggested CBD oil. Let me tell you something. Before you suggest anything to, put, to treat an avian with, don't assume because it's good for a human, it's good for an avian species. They're totally different. They digest food differently. They do a lot of things differently. Um, I don't, I get lamb basted for it every day, but I don't believe in the fermented feed fad. I think it's a fad, and I don't believe avians' crops are, are, are meant to process that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, you can do Gordon Ramsay gourmet dishes on a silver plate if you want to for your chickens, but it's not going to do them any good. They need to eat the proper feed for their breed, for their age, for their function. And uh, slop, slopping the chickens is not it. That's the way I feel about it. Now, don't be, don't be trolling my channel because I said that. But I'm just telling you, because something might be good for a human being does not mean it's good for avians. Tea tree oil, toxic. Don't put tea tree oil all over your chickens. Toxic. They ingest it, they can die. Uh, citronella, toxic. Don't be doing things like that. Aromatics can be toxic to chickens. Don't be doing that. Um, there are a lot of things that are toxic to chickens that are not toxic to, to a mammal. An avian is not a mammal. Their systems are completely different. So don't be suggesting, oh, CBD oil is the cure for everything in humans and in chickens. Chickens, you could be, you could be setting somebody up to kill their birds. I don't know about what it does to an avian. I don't know that, and I'm not going to put it on my birds. I'm not, I don't care if you afford it for me, so I'm certainly not going to go out there and put CBD oil on a chicken. But I'm just telling you, don't assume because it's good for dogs, cats, or humans that a chicken can tolerate it. It's not the same thing. Uh, you might be doing a disservice to people by suggesting that. I'm just saying. I mean, I know it's well-meaning, but it may be dangerous. Okay? So, I'm just telling you that there are things that happen with chickens that are not textbook, that will not present so that you can say, oh, it's this. Okay, okay, it's got this symptoms, that means it's this. That doesn't work with chickens. I've seen way too many things that are not textbook. And, hard as it is to accept, there will be mysteries with chickens. Why did this bird die? I've gone all over everything. I can't figure it out. Guess what? You may never figure it out. There will be those mysteries, and they will remain unsolved. And as much as that goes against the grain for me, and you know I need to solve that, um, it just is what it is. You do the best you can, you get the best stock you can, you feed them the best nutrition, you give them the best environment, and things happen that you cannot control. So 
anyway, that that was what I wanted to say today about that. Um, about the, you know the the textbook things and how about Bash's situation and uh, about my hens dying off. Yeah, they're dying off because they're old. They're very old. Like I said, I've got eight more from nine years old to twelve plus years old. If they all died in one day, that wouldn't be an unusual mortality rate. Right? That would be them finally catching up with their expiration dates. That's all. That's all. So, um, I don't mean to sound like I'm fussing you out. I just wanted to be sure that people understand this. That, uh, and I'm not getting the state involved. I will never get the state involved in my, ba um, in my barnyard because uh, you think the labs are your friend? The labs don't care a thing about your backyard flock. All they're there for is to protect the commercial flocks against your flocks. Huh, they're, be, they're, they're perfectly willing to test your flock so that they can kill off your flock if it has a reportable disease that might be a risk to a commercial flock nearby. That's the plain, honest truth of it. So don't think they're there to protect you. They're protect, to protect commercial flocks, not yours. Yours is a threat to commercial flocks, in their opinion. So, um, i am never take a bird to a state vet. They don't always uh, <laughs> administer these diagnoses properly. They do visual inspections, not tissue inspections, because they don't want to go to the trouble. It's too expensive, and your flock doesn't matter. That's <laughs> long short, it doesn't matter. They may make you think it matters, but it does not matter to them. Only the commercial flock and big agribiz matters, because that's what they're there for. That's what MPIP is for. That's what State Vet is there for. That is it. So, that's my rant for the day. Not, it wasn't really meant to be a rant. I'm just trying to be informative here uh, and let you know about some of these things. And uh, I'll let you know what happens with Bash. I don't know what's going to happen with him. Uh, he looks great this morning. Then I went in there a while ago and he was back in there laying down the floor. It's up and down and up and down. He could just have a heart problem could be a defect um, you know God only knows I don't I don't know but it'll whatever happens is gonna happen with him I've done everything I can do I've explored everything he's gotten the best nutrition he's got an aspirin in case it's a heart issue that I can you know like a stroke that I could you know I don't know but he's had everything done for him that can be done so we'll see what happens with him and uh, I hope you just wanted to, you'll take this in the spirits which is given it's just for information I just want you to understand these things and it's very important that you understand not to always put some, give things to avians that, that might be good for you because that might kill them. That's the long and short of it. So uh, we'll talk to you guys later. And uh, I don't know. Like I said, you know, rest in peace, Neela. She flipped off the roost last night and uh, died in my husband's arms. And um, I think her body just quit. She was bossing everybody around yesterday morning, like always. Could barely walk from arthritis, but she was bossy. She wasn't sick for a long time, nothing like that. She was just old and decrepit, and uh, her heart just quit finally. So, God bless her. She was a precious girl. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.